Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on Liz The One TV. I'm your girl, Liz The One. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for your girl. Um, so like I said, I'm going to finish reviewing this season of Power. And this is season 6, episode 9. It's the final season. Um, so you guys just tune in for my reviews. At some point, I'm going to start doing reviews face to face. And you know I'm going to review The Real Housewives of Atlanta on Sunday, but I'm going to start doing this review, uh, power on, um, Saturday night or Sunday morning. It'll just make it easier on me so that way I can review the Real Housewives of Atlanta because that's what we really want to see. Anyway, let's get into it. Tommy's in the car and you know he's sad because, you know, he came in and he, he saw Keisha dead. Cash is sleeping in the back seat. And, um, flash forward when he takes Cash to his father. Cash's father is, um, Jesse Williams, whose character is Kadeem in this. So it'll be interesting to see um, what Jesse Williams plays, because he normally plays clean cut, um, and I like Grey's Anatomy. But he was pretty tatted up in this, so it's interesting to see, like, you know, um, what'll happen. Anyway, Tommy vows to get whoever did this to Keisha, and Kadeem, you know, pretty much says, um, let me know if you need anything. So at any point, like, after this, the detective, the one that looks like she chews her jaw, the one that gets on my nerves. Um, I'm just going to keep referring to her, the detective that chews like her jaw. She looks like she's got like gerbil cheeks. Um, detective gerbil cheek is what we're going to call her. She meets Tommy and she's trying to like um, get info on Keisha. And she tries to pin Keisha's murder on him. And he, you know, he has an alibi. He was buying an engagement ring for her. And she said that Keisha was going to flip. And he said, that's not true. She told me everything. She wouldn't have flipped. And then she leaves him alone at some point because she believes that he didn't do it because he looks heartbroken to her. Ghost, um, he's looking at this property with a real estate agent. And, you know, they, um, they know who he is in that town. So they're giving him the benefit of the doubt. They're giving him the benefit of the doubt. You know, she says you need to move quickly on this um, and hold that thought. We will see why he's looking at this property, okay? So right afterwards, um, you know, uh, when the real estate agent leaves or said that she's got an appointment across town, um, Ramona uh, and Tate's opponent, Lorette, uh, she wants Ghost to be her running mate. And uh, he basically tells her point blank, period. Uh, be your black friend to get you the black vote. And she's like, you know, I like him. So she wants to make him her lieutenant governor to keep the black vote on lock. You know, keep the negras in line. So Tommy, um, he's looking at the ring that he bought Keisha. He's heartbroken. And that's when Ghost calls. And um, flashback, it looks suspicious because Ghost told Tommy that he owed Tommy for Angela. Because remember, Ghost was madly in love with Angela. Ghost is such a narcissistic prick, but... He told, you know, Tommy a while back, you know, I still owe you for Angela. So Tommy in his brain is thinking like, Ghost did this, you know. So he gets the call from Ghost and Ghost asks if he put the piece where he needed it. Um, so that way, you know, because they were going to set Jason up so he can uh, get to Jason and they can just be rid of Jason. So Tommy's in a, like he's in a daze and he is like, you know, he's, he's real stoic and he's like, yeah, I did it. Um... So Dre is in a car with a detective gerbil jaws and um, she asked if he knew who killed Keisha. And he says, you know, it's it's, it was probably Tommy. But she, you know, she passively threatens to like um, put an ankle monitor back on him because she knows that it wasn't Tommy. And asked him, uh, you know, where was uh, Tommy's warehouse where he keeps his product or whatever. And he says Tommy and his crew abducted him and put him in, like, the back of the car. And he was wearing the ankle monitor so you could pull the location off that. So, um, she lets him out of that moment. And then, you know, they get up. And, like, and I just, um, Dre has kind of outlived his usefulness in this. Um, but I'm going to keep reviewing this <laughs> until the end. Dre get on my damn nerves. I just want y'all to know that. Dre get on my damn nerves. So, Ghost, now we find out why Ghost was looking at, you know, the property. He wants to convince Jason to invest in the building, and he needs a silent partner. 
and he gave him the address and he put emphasis on we got to hurry on this and says um, neither one of them can be strapped when they enter the building. So, you know, Jason cops the attitude and he's like, don't tell me what the F to do, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like a nagging bitch. Like, don't tell me what the F to do. I do what I want. But, you know, you'll see later on. Eventually, he winds up not coming in strapped, was which is like a huge mistake. It was really stupid. Um... So after this, Ramona and Tate, and Tate, like, you know, Tate's pretty much a moron. He's like um, a fool. He's too big for his britches. Um, so he tells Ramona that, you know, he's severing ties with James St. Patrick and um, explains, um, you know, well, Ramona, she's like playing dumb, really. You know, I'm looking at my notes. Y'all forgive me. Ramona, she's playing stupid. And, you know, she's like, okay. Um, I agree you should, you know, cut ties with him. But, you know, of course, he didn't call him ghost. He called him James St. Pa- James St. Patrick. So we go on with Tasha and Ghost. And Ghost walks in. And he walks in and he sees her with the stripper. And, you know, they push and wait, like, in the, the daycare. And, you know, he tries to guilt trip her. Like, you know, I can't believe you push and wait outside of this. You know, like, they pretty much got to go to this parent-teacher's conference for Tariq. And, you know, Ghost gets on my damn nerves because he's so selfish. And he's so self-centered. And he's telling her, like, he's trying to guilt trip her. Like, you know, well, one of us has got to be there for our son. But you got to remember, this is what Tasha has been doing. You know, the only reason he's invested now in his family is because he wants to run for governor. He wants it to be a good look. And then, you know, remember, he was cheating on her with Angela. He was doing everything but being a father and being a husband. So now he's trying to guilt trip her because, you know, she's like, you know, F you. OK, what the hell you think I've been doing? So, um, he, you know, he's like, you know, I, I hope you're not putting this the weight over your own child. You know, she went off and I don't blame her. You know, I would have threw something at him, but that's just me. Anyway, the next scene, Drake calls Jason um, and pretty much gives him a tip that uh, he gives him a tip that Tommy's place is going to be raided. And I know you're looking for a new distro, blah, blah, blah. And um, he gives him that tip. So hold that thought. This is why Dre gets on my damn nerves because Dre should have been gone. But just hold that thought. Ghost is at parent teachers conference, um, and he meets with Tariq's teacher, and he said he's pretty amazing. He's pretty awesome, and the teacher says that, um, you know, it's pretty amazing that he can, you know, be this smart and have an after school like job and work full time at his mom's daycare, and this prompts Ghost's interest, like you know, because remember, he walked in and he saw Tasha pushing weight at the the laundromat, or not the damn laundry. What the fuck am I talking about laundromat? <laughs> I was talking about, he walked in and he saw a ghost. Walked in and saw her, Tasha. Ghost walked in and saw Tasha pushing weight outside of the daycare. Not the laundromat. I'm on one. Anyway, and he look, he looks through the files because, you know, it prompted his suspicion. So on the next scene, he's in Tasha's apartment before she already keys in. Like, you know, she's keying in and she turns around after she closes the door and this fool is sitting in her apartment and just chilling there and he's sitting up here trying to check her about Tariq moving weight but what his dumb ass don't know if he was a father to his son if he would have like um been paying attention to this boy um Tariq is gonna do what Tariq wants to do and that's what Tasha's sitting up here trying to tell him you done sat up here and held a gun to this boy's head you done done everything to this boy he's not going to stop you see what I'm saying because he don't like you he been not liking you Nobody likes you, <laughs> okay? So, um, <clears throat> he talks to her about this, and, like, he's trying to check her or whatever about Tariq moving weight, and she checks him, you know, and he threatens to get her business shut down, and that pissed her off, you know. She pretty much threatens to snitch on him about Terry Silver, and that pissed him off, and so he put his hands on her. He put his hands over her mouth and, you know, grabbed her arm and stuff like that. Pretty much could have took her life right then and there, and, like, it was a kind of uncomfortable scene. Like, he is really becoming unhinged, but it just drives home the point that Ghost ain't for nobody but himself, and the fact that he pushed her head back, that would have prompted me. She's sitting up here screaming, get out. That's when you should have picked up a knife. Or a chair or something. You see what I'm saying? That scene really pissed me off. Um, but I guess that's what it was designed to do. 
Some of these scenes are irritating, but I guess this scene was designed to really, like, piss you off. It was designed to piss you off because we know that he's wrong, he's selfish, you know. She pretty much put her life on hold for him, been raising his kids, and he's been running off doing whatever and everything for him. But, anyway, he leaves. Um, he acts, um, he's, like, at his club, and he's drinking, then he calls in like this anonymous tip to Tasha's daycare. And he pretty much lets them know that um, that somebody's moving weight in there, you know, and he keeps it anonymous. But when they raided her or whatever, she's smart and she doesn't keep anything there. And like this really, really pisses her off though. She can't believe that he did this. And to her, it's like game on, you know. She can't believe that he did this. Um... And, like, it drew, like, the stripper girl that she had been working with, um, it kind of drove her away because she's like, you know, I'm not about to get caught. And you got kids, too, so you need to chill, too. So, um, after this, Tommy rounds up his, like, crew, like, in the next scene. He rounds up his crew at the warehouse, calls them or whatever. But remember earlier when Dre was, like, um dropping a tip to Detective uh, Gerbil Jaws. Um, and he told them everything. They raided the, the warehouse or whatever. And Tommy was, like, off hiding behind, like, some drums or something like that. So it looks like Tommy set up... It looks like he set up um, his crew. Which is not true, but it looks like he set them up or whatever. So Tasha... Um, you know, and this guy Q, this, this, like this, the connection between them is weird, but like he walks in and, you know, pretty much like, you know, he can't stop thinking about her, like some cheesy Hallmark film, even though sometimes I like cheesy Hallmark films, don't judge me. Um, it's like some cheesy Hallmark film and, um, He's like, I can't stop thinking about you. And then he sees her arm. And then for some weird reason, all of a sudden, he wants to go beat up Ghost. I don't really understand um, the point of his character. But I'm sure we're going to find out soon. I'm pretty sure he's not as innocent and such a stand-up guy. But we're going to find out soon. Because they keep setting Tasha's character up to be the fool. You know, like, the fool in love. And it's getting annoying at this point. So, Ghost meets with Jason, and, um, pretty much, um, he lures him into the elevator, and, um, when he kneels down to tie his shoe and open up the thing that's on the elevator, he noticed that Tommy didn't place the piece. But while he's doing that, he gets this tweet from Tommy, Jason gets the tweet from Tommy, and it says that, uh, you know, Ghost is gonna kill you. And that's when the scene popped off. It was a it was a pretty good scene. Um, it was like, I don't know really what you call it, but he kind of choked him to death with this thing. And it like went through his neck and uh, it kind of made him bleed out or whatever. So it was just really weird. So he, he killed him. Um, and then he set um, Dre up, text Drago, you know, and was like, you know, Dre double, co double crossed me or whatever. But... One interesting thing that I'm, like, um, focused on, like, he pays a security guard um, to, like, um, sort of erase his face up off of the the video footage or whatever and set it up so that way another security guard could catch him or whatever. And I just kind of want to see where that goes, if they're going to come back and question this security guard. So on film, it looks like Dre did it by himself. And... Um, yeah, I'm just interested to know, like, you know, what's going to happen with that security guard. Anyway, so Benny comes to see Ghost. And Benny wants to know about Proctor. Yeah, Proctor. Um, about Joe. And Benny is his cousin or whatever. And um, this scene is kind of unimportant. But, he, you know, Ghost pretty much says that I got a hunch that Tommy did it, but I can't prove it, blah, blah, blah. But here's what pissed me off about the scene with Benny. Benny went to go after Tommy with a knife. This is what's pissing me off about Benny's scene. You could have just got a gun, put a silencer on it. You wanted to go in there and fight Tommy with a knife. 
And I don't understand this. Like, that scene is, like, forever pissing me off. Okay? So now, Tommy, Tariq, and Tasha, they're all together. And, you know, um, Tommy's talking about Keisha. And he says that, you know, ghosts kill Keisha. And then, you know, Keisha, um, Tasha plays stupid. Like, you know, oh, my God. Like, it's just really horrible acting. You can kind of tell that she's acting. Um, I guess it's supposed to di differentiate from the acting that she normally does on the show, which is pretty good. But, you know, she got kind of dramatic and fake, and you can kind of see it. And, she, you know, like, he threatened to kill Ghost and said that he was going to do it. And, you know, Tariq and Tasha really don't give a damn. But, um, you know, and then, like, to drive her point home, she says that, you know, he had my spot rated by the feds or whatever, some crap like that. So when Tommy leaves, that's when Tasha tells Tariq everything that happened. She tells him everything that happened, and, you know, this pisses Tariq off because, you know, little boys, they love their moms. And uh, not just that. I love my mom, too, and if somebody ever put their hands on my mom, I'm flipping the fuck out. Point blank, period. So he sees this, and, um, yeah, it kind of set him off, and he said that he was going to um, to see him or whatever. This is a really long review for some weird-ass reason. But let's keep going. Okay, um, so, you know, give me like a month and we're going to start doing these face-to-face -face or whatever. Because, um, I really don't want to edit this. I'm not going to edit this right here. Um, I'm just going to put like a picture up on the screen and let you guys look at it. But I'm not going to edit this, but I'm kind of get trying to get my review thing on. So just listen to it kind of like a podcast. So, Tate visits ghost and told him he knows who he is and that he knows that he set up a robbery for him to kill a man you know and he you know they argue back and forth and you know ghost told him you know if i wanted to kill you i'd already be dead and tate so full of himself he says you know you you can't really come after me because i'm too high profile and he said listen if i wanted to get rid of you you would just disappear like a ghost so um he told him, don't worry, I agree, we should sever ties, and he said, you will, re you will read about my next move in tomorrow's paper. So, he leaves. So, when he gets to his office, um, he tells um, Ramona that he's done with James St. Patrick, and then Ramona tells him that, you know, James St. Patrick's is... Um, he's Lorette's running mate, and she said that I don't work for you anymore, I work for him. So, Detective Gerbil Jaws and Sax in the next scene, you know, um, they're together in this jazz club and she asks for his help or whatever. And you know he's full of it. Anyway, let's just move on because um, in the next scene, Detective Gerbil Jaws and Sax visit Tasha at her apartment, you know. And I don't get it, like, where these people get off being so cocky, threatening people, like, you know, we're going to investigate your son. It's, it's like, really not getting them anywhere. But Tasha, of course, it spooks her a little bit. And um, she pretty much says that I believe that um, James killed Terry Silver. And she kind of, like, gave them the location of where she think he did it. And they found him. But when they were, like, in the car, Sax, um, when they were in the car, Sax found the phone and he hid it from Detective Gerbil Jaws and later on he gives the phone to Dre and has Dre place the phone in Ghost apartment like just plan it so that way they can find the evidence or whatever and I really don't know what they're going to find on it it might implicate Tasha um, but I'm just hoping that Ghost gets his comeuppance I'm hoping that he gets his karma anyway Drake does it and in the final scene Tariq confronts Ghost, you know, and he confronted Ghost about putting his hands on his mama, you know, um, he pretty much told him, like, you know, you didn't slap me, you didn't put a gun to my head, you know, and, um, somewhere in there, Ghost sits up here and he tries to claim that, he tries to claim that, um, Tasha was trying to turn him against him, and he told him, everything you do is for you, you know, you're selfish, and that's really true, you know, he said, you are turning me against you, you know, and he pretty much just got ghosts together. And um, in the end, he wound up threatening. He said, I'll end you myself if you ever touch her again. And I knew that this was coming. So ghost is selfish. Everybody kind of sees him for who he is at this point. Like before he had his family on his side, 
And so, you know, he was kind of untouchable. He was the Teflon Don. Um, he's still sort of looking like the Teflon Don, but I believe that now the chips are about to start falling and things are about to start catching up with him. I still don't know what the hell that guy Q, um, who wants to be with Tasha, is for. I think that she has a history of just getting with the wrong man over and over and over again. Like, she cannot pick him, you know? She can't pick him. I think that she's one of those. She might be a little codependent, okay? She needs some help. Anyway, that's really all I got to say about this. Thanks for clicking on Liz the One TV. It'll be a better re review next week. And um, in about a month, I'm going to start doing this face-to-face. -face. Be looking out for my blog. I'm going to announce that up. And when Real Housewives of Atlanta comes back, that's going to be my baby coming up soon because I'm going to review the hell out of it. And I can't wait. Anyway, thanks for clicking on Liz the One TV. I'm your girl, Liz the One. Peace out.